All right, guys, this will be lesson 1.6. Uh, if you look at our learning targets for today, analyze the author's use of descriptive language in a personal narrative and its effect on the reader. So this right here, descriptive language, is going to be huge. So descriptive language is going to be things like similes and metaphors and hyperboles. And okay, so we're going to look out for those. That's something that as you go through and read this on your own, you're going to try and find as many of the similes and metaphors as you can highlight using the memory your highlight feature up here so remember a metaphor is when you compare two unlike things directly okay. and a simile is when you uh, compare two unlike things using like or as so you can see over here the example of a simile his music is like a fast trip on a roller coaster so it uses like. If you took out that like, his music is a fast trip on a roller coaster. That would turn it into a metaphor. So we don't need to get hang up, hung up too much on which one is which, but if you see like or as comparing things, it's most likely going to be a, a simile there. So that'll be an easy way to identify it. Uh, also, as you go through and read it on your own, circle any unknown words or phrases and try and use those context clues. Word parts. When it says word parts, that means uh, using root words, we'll talk about those a lot all throughout the year because that is a good way of, once you know part of one word, like, or a prefix, like auto, so automatic, uh, so that's, so we'll look at Greek and Latin roots, we won't get too much into them right now, but uh, make sure the focus here is going to be similes and metaphors. Okay, so this is a story called The Jacket by Gary Soto. Uh, Gary Soto is a pretty famous uh, Mexican-American author. And uh, this will read several of his works this year. Uh, and this one is about a kid, and obviously you can guess about him and his jacket. He and his feelings towards that jacket. It's kind of an odd topic for a a story, but I, I do like this one. It had, the, the figure of language is really good. Okay, so after you have read it and marked those, highlighted those similes and metaphors. It's going to ask you to go back and look at the opening sentence. How does the author engage and orient the reader? Okay, so when it says engage and orient the reader, another word, we, another phrase we call that is the hook. So how does the author hook us? Okay, how does it make us want to learn, read more into the story? So as writers, we also want to use hooks to get the, the reader, which in this case, most of the time when you write, it's for me, uh, to want to catch my interest and keep reading. Okay, so how does... Gary Soto do that at the beginning of the story. Uh, it asks you to identify the point of view of the text. First person, remember we did mention second person in the last lesson, but it, I'll tell you it's not going to be second person, or is it third person? Okay, And then it also wants you to cite evidence to support your decision of first person. Okay, Is it telling the story from a character's point of view and uses pronouns like I or me? Or is it using third person pronouns like he, she, them? Okay, so those are the two keys there. So go back and look and see and uh, identify how you know that. Uh, number three, to show his hatred of a jacket, Soto exaggerates the effect of the jacket on his life. List some effects of the jacket by copying phrases directly of the story, directly from the story. So he does not like his jacket, and he blames it for lots of things. So list some of the things that he blames on the jacket. Uh, number four, paragraphs seven, eight, and nine have especially vivid examples. Remember, vivid, that's a good word, of helping you see, hear, smell, you know, appealing to those five senses uh, of how the, the narrator is feeling. Underline examples, so you should have already underlined those, and then write a couple of those that you like, those similes and metaphors that you like the most. Uh, number five, in the final paragraph of the narrative, Soto uses the following metaphor to describe his jacket. My jacket, that ugly green brother who breathed over my shoulder that day and ever since. Based on this line, what can you conclude about the significance of the jacket in Soto's life? Uh, and then it mentions, we just talked about vivid verbs. I want you to go back to paragraph 5 and underline the vivid verbs. So I believe, yeah, the pages, the paragraphs are numbered. Okay, so go back to paragraph 5 and underline all of the vivid verbs. So instead of saying run, the author would say sprinted, galloped, something like that. Okay, so you're trying to not use boring words and use more exciting verbs. 
Okay, so instead of saying they walked to school, here's examples. They marched to school. They scrambled to school. They sauntered to school. They skipped to school. Okay, so those are much better verbs that all mean the same thing as walked. But it just provides a better mental image uh, for the reader. Okay, so go back to paragraph 5. Underline the vivid verbs. Choose two of the vivid verbs and describe the images they create in your mind. Then rewrite those two sentences using different verbs telling how the images change. Okay, pretty good. So you can put that right in there. Uh, in addition to figurative language and vivid verbs, writers use sensory details. We just talked about that to enhance their writing. Uh, sensory language appeals to the five senses. Okay, so skim through the jacket looking for examples of descriptive language. Write, write four examples in the table. Then analyze each example to understand the effect the author is trying to create. Finally, evaluate the examples for their effectiveness. Okay, so you will identify what type of descriptive language it is, a simile or a metaphor most likely in this case. You're going to write the example there. You're going to tell what effect it has and how effective it is. Does it do a good job or could it be better? Okay, so you're going to do that with four different similes or metaphors and identify each of those. Okay, And the last one, it says, select a short passage in the text that includes vivid description of a person, place, or situation. Then summarize the effect of this passage on you as a reader. How does the description make you feel? What does the passage help you understand about the story? Does it remind you of something else that has happened to you? A lot of times as a reader we make connections to things that have happened in our lives. So does anything in this, and in, in any of those passages in the story, I'm sure we've all had disagreements with our mothers, or we've had a piece of clothing that we didn't like. Okay, so write that those examples there. And then the last one is, it says, analyze the writer's use of descriptive language, including similes and metaphors, vivid verbs, and sensory language. How does the use of descriptive language help express the narrator's response to the incident? Be sure to start the paragraph with a topic sentence that directly addresses this prompt. So you could just, a lot of times it helps us rephrase what they're asking us to do in the, so you could say the writer's descriptive language helps express the narrator's response to the incident by, okay, so that we created a topic sentence by using the prompt. That's a good trick. Support your answer by referencing textual evidence. Remember, we always want to do that. And, of course, always punctuate complete sentences. All right, guys, it's a good story. Remember, we'll talk about this together in class uh, during the synchronous time together. I uh, hope we have a good time reading the story and participating in the activities. Thanks. And remember to always... Whenever you type anything, make sure you always save it and know where you save it so you can turn it in later. All right, thanks, guys.